To hear past episodes of the Rap Radar podcast, what they got to do, B. You got to sign up for Title at title.com backslash on air. Yeah, that'll get you a 90 day complimentary membership. Access to 50 million tracks and 200,000 videos. Title.com on air. Yeah, Rap Radar Podcast, Elliot Wilson. It's B-Dot. B-Dot, what's up, baby? Bad boy for life? Yeah, of course, man. But <laughs> right now, we're with the hottest producer in the world. He called himself the sauciest white boy in the game. And I'm the sauciest white boy. <laughs> I don't know. Best producer, that's for the fans to decide. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're hot out here, though. We hot. Quay we called we... it in 2013. Yeah, we definitely hot. Yeah. Murder Beats is here. What's yeah. up, yes, Murder? Sir. What's up, baby? Man, I'm just chilling. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful weather, L.A. The chain is looking lovely. Thank you. Both chains? Both chains, <laughs> Two chains. Man. Ice trade a game, man. Two chains. I'm going to need three chains, man. You know? <laughs> Shout out my boy, Tit. But the magic number is four, man. Four weeks at number one. Mm-hmm. Nice for what? Yeah. Nice so that for comes what? from the mind of Murder Beast. Like, talk, like that's, a, that's a really atypical, you know, Lauryn Hill sped up, bounce. Like, how, how does that song come together? I feel like, I just feel like music needed a record like that. I feel like it was, like, very refreshing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And even for, like, a lot of, like, older hip-hop people, like, you know what I'm saying? It just, like, brought, like, I feel like the young generation and new generation together to, like, fuck with one record. Because, yeah. you know, a lot of people nowadays are like, oh, like, I fuck with these hip hop people. I fuck with these old heads. I don't fuck with these new guys. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So just like classic Drake, Young Murder, on like you know what I'm saying, old school record. Put it all together. You know what I'm saying? It's just it was a crazy record. But why Lauren Hill? Actually, so we were chilling. We were chilling at Drake's house. We were playing 2K, and, and, <laughs> and uh, we we came up with the idea to get like a female artist, like like a to sample female artist. So I asked my manager Corey, I'm like, Yo, what do you think? Like, well, well he's like. Uh, X Factor, mm. and then Drake mm. was like, "Oh, what part?" And then like we picked the part, chopped it up. I made the beat when he was playing 2K. You know what I'm saying? Wow. He, he playing his like uh, my player and all that shit. He like this shit fire. You know what I'm saying? Like boom, made the beat right there. And then he sat there, wrote the shit in front of me, cut the shit in front of me. And oh, then Drake we had the, did, wow. Yeah, we had the shit done, and like, like, beat and song probably like hour and a half. Wow. And then I think he he finished like the second verse later on. Yeah, but yeah, that was like we that was in Toronto and stuff too. Yeah. So, so that's not Canada, yeah. Canadian boys but, but it, really it's not in. it's not often where like I'll make I'll sit with an artist and like make a lot of records in person. Yeah, with from beginning Canadian, to end with yeah. a Canadian artist. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like that was a special moment. Like I've made like a lot of beats in Canada. You know, I made like I made like the motorsport beat at my boy's crib. Yeah, you said little <clears> bold speakers and all yeah, right you know here, what I'm saying? saying. So like, yeah. But the whole know. bounce feel of it, like it's such an atypical sound. Like I mean, you know, you're a master mm-hmm. of drums and all that, but just the fact that it's it's such a homage to like the New Orleans sound, right? That mm-hmm. bounce where he's from, with Wayne being the guy who helped put Drake on, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I just, I don't know. I just do my thing and put the murder sauce on it. And then that's just, <laughs> that's just how it f- figures out to be, you know? Like, even like when we made With You on Views, it's like I was with Party and like we were like cooking up and stuff. And I didn't even know I was making an Afro drum beat. Like, you know, With mm-hmm. You on Views, Party yeah. and Drake. I didn't even know I was making an Afro drum beat. And I just, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was just making some hard shit and it just sounded. Fire. I thought it was like some dance song mm-hmm. or whatever, but well, he's like, he's like, yo, I don't even think you even know you're making Afro drum. Right. I'm like, yeah. damn, that's crazy. But then people look at you like you're the ultimate, the sauciest white boy, but you're also like the ultimate trap music producer in a sense, right? Like, does that, does that title or that type of like, you know, uh, tag bother you at all? Like, that maybe it's limiting at times to be like, this is a trap producer. It doesn't bother me, but I don't want to be like boxed in you know what i'm saying like last year any you can ask anyone last year in the industry i was telling everyone i'm like yo i want to have the biggest pop record with selena gomez and have the biggest underground record out at one time Mm. so a year later at the same time i had a number one with drake i dropped bless your trap and smoke perk yeah so i'm coming the ground you you know what i'm saying like that's how i want to be and that's how i want my whole career to be i want to be able to touch all age groups all genres of music you know what i'm saying and just like be a real producer and show people how to like actually be a producer, not just like make yeah. beats and like send beats to email, get mm-hmm. a couple here and there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. So, so you pay so many dues. I wonder like with the smoke perp thing and like I know you were saying like obviously there was a lot of trend of like a producer and MC getting together, right? But it seemed like you really was embracing it more. Like I felt like you guys were really forming a real rap group. You know what I mean? Like the way you were carrying yourself. Nah, like, yeah, for real. You nah. know, like was, we it, going was that a New reason York. to put yourself like in the forefront? You know, because you've done so much behind the scenes. Yeah, you know, like, I don't know, like, I'm definitely, like, more of a guy that's, like, I want to be, like, I, w- I want you to know who Murder is, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's how I've always been. Like, when people are coming up on Twitter, like, producers and stuff, they usually, like, don't show themselves and shit. And, like, that's, where, like, at an early age, I was, like, 16 going to Chicago. 
You know what I'm saying? I was like, find Chief Keith, I was like, right? I, I found, <laughs> yeah, I found Amigos, 17 years old in Atlanta. Like, you know what I'm saying? Off of social media and shit. They're like, oh, is this the white boy? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Coaching them, like, yo, we need to fly you out. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. Right. I don't when, know. Getting back to uh, Nice for What with the sample, were you a fan of Lauryn Hill's music prior to getting into that record? I fuck, I fuck with her music. I never like grew up with it. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Cause like coming from my background, I grew up around like classic rock and like rock music and stuff like that. So I feel like that's what gives me like a different edge on like producing as well. Mm -hmm. Because I just have like that different, like like a lot of a lot of trap producers and a lot of producers in my lane right now come up on like jazz and blues and like soulful music and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I came up on like rock music, so. I feel like that's what gives me an advantage on my drums and stuff. Right. So. Did you? Did she have to give it the, her blessing for the record too? Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did a little remix at the yeah. one of her shows. Was that the Apollo? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. yeah. What do you Lauren think about now. the way Drake approached the record lyrically? Because I saw some people like he was even trying to be critical of saying like that track is just so like dope as instrumental. Like anybody could have like a lot of MCs could have won with that track. Why do you think Drake the way Drake navigated that track was the perfect? Well, one one way. thing is though is if is if me and Drake weren't together, that beat would have never been made. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's for a lot of music too. That's what people gotta understand. Even like people like curate vibes, like like me and you might go in the studio right now and I might make a hit in front of you and it might be fucking Hov's next single, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if you weren't there, that beat would have never been made. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So people gotta remember that too. It's like people bring the vibe and it's like me and Drake being together spark that energy to make a record like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you and, know it was gonna go number one? We knew it was gonna be mm. like <laughs> honestly, like I, I, I think yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's just, like I'm dead serious too. That's just actually crazy. Like, like when we made this, he's like, this is this is one of them. <laughs> I was like, and I was like, yo, like this is that shit. Like this ain't no trap. This right. ain't no, you know what I'm saying. This isn't like I like hitting people like with a left. I'm left handed, so I like hitting people with a left jab. Mm, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because like even like the with you thing, like when when the when they dropped that views track list, everyone's like. Oh shit, man! It's gonna be hard, hard, yeah. Trap beat, you know what I'm saying? And then they drop that shit. And they're like, "What yeah. the fuck is this shit?" Like some people were confused, some people didn't yeah. like it. Right. Some people were like, "Oh, but this is this is amazing." But what is it like being behind like this? Also, the way Drake played the angle of it with the lyrics and even the visual, like such a, like a woman empowerment type of vibe to it. Hey man, shout out to Drake, man. <laughs> you know you love saying? the ladies. <laughs> yeah, you know, like I don't know, like the ladies love motorsport. The ladies like nice for what? <laughs> the ladies are gonna love my album when it comes out. Like you know, what I'm saying I have records. I don't know. Was it his idea to put Big Frida on it, or was it yours? It is. Oh, okay. He, he, bro, this guy's a genius. Mm. Yeah, I was gonna say, what's it like? Because I mean, with views, you, that was the first time you really got really started connecting. Like, you did Portland too, obviously. Right. Um, Flutes. Like, I did Portland. Long talk. No long talk. No shopping. Yeah, the whole drop comes from Baca, right? Yeah. Baca's Shut up, homie. Baca. That's how. That's how we really tapped in. You know what I'm saying? Like we like we like kind of like in the clubs with Baca all the time. Like yo, man, you should be you should be a rapper. Like. You know what I'm saying? Me, Gilla, my manager, we're like, yo, you should be a rapper. Oh, you put the, you put the battery guy, in Baca's got, back? Got this guy in the studio, and like, you know what I'm saying? He was just like amped up, one of those guys that's always like pumped up and mm -hmm. shit. And like, we started, we started making music with him and stuff, going going to the club, being like, yo, you can go to the club and play your music because that's just like turning up and shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Started going to the club, playing his music, and one day on a song, he said, Baca, aka Not Nice, murder on the beat, so it's not nice. And Drake was really fucking with that from there. Mm -hmm. So then, you know what I'm saying? That's where I got the tag from. Mm -hmm. And I think even the first person I asked was Sunny Digital, too, in Toronto. I was like, yo, play him the song. I'm like, yo, what do you, what do you think if I, like, use that as a tag? Because I just had the moment with murder. And he's like, hey, man, you never know, man. You should try it out one day. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know what I'm saying? Shut up, Sunny Digital. Yeah. But yeah, that was literally the first time that I, like, I really, like, thought about using the, the Baca tag, too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So when did you first really get to work with Drake? With Portland joint, I guess? Like, when did you guys really first lock in? Um... After with you, that's when like we started like kind of like more like he invited me to his house yeah. and he played me back on road no shopping in like one sitting mm -hmm. and I was like holy shit like you know what I'm saying I think we were going to watch like a Raptors game or some shit he's like yo come come out here whatever he played me those two records so I was like damn shit crazy you know what I'm saying yeah. so salute the six god you know <laughs> going crazy out here snapping yeah I saw you say something record. like obviously him being the biggest and from Canada like in you know so many dope producers are from Canada yeah. Um, but like I, th I think I saw an interview was saying like let's not get let's not get complacent though like we have an opportunity right now where Drake's at this position like we have to go for it like we can't just get comfortable like you know that the vibes with Toronto producers that we have to go out there and get it right yeah and then just like not even producers as well like I feel like artists like there's such like a crazy 
underground music, like music base right now in Toronto that's like needs to be more capitalized on. Like, there's so many like, there's so many like talented artists. Like, you know, you guys know a few like, you know, like Presta. You got like yeah, Achilles. You got like Presta, yeah. Prime Boys. You got like a bunch of people, right? And I just feel like people just got to, like, learn to use the resources more and just, like, really pipe up the whole scene, mm, yeah. you know? And the whole the whole thing, like, you know, like, like we're from a different country, too. So if we get, if I get arrested right now for, for like, some dumb shit, I'm, I can't come back to the States for five years. Mm, That's mm. something I had to risk coming up, you know what I'm saying? Being mm -hmm. around all these hood, hood rap stars, trap Rapping, stars in Atlanta, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That was a lot to risk. Yeah. So it's, like, people got to figure out how to capitalize that and, like, monetize the industry more on the underground standpoint mm -hmm. in Toronto. And it seems like you talk about capitalizing and monetizing. You're from Canada, but you just blindly went to Chicago and trying to get in it? <laughs> yeah, yo, honestly, I wouldn't tell any of, like, like, I wouldn't tell a lot of people to do what I did. But like I was 16. Just, yeah, like, I was, I don't know. I don't know. Did my, you know my mom anybody? Was scared. I, I knew, I hit up some people on the internet, <laughs> went, da went down, went, went down to the, like, the 100s, like, so, wait, I was you, wild. so take us through, you land in like Chicago O'Hare, right? Yeah. So how do you Went even downtown. Know, how do you even know to how to the, go uh, to like the, the, uh, the hood? The red, red roof in, red, red some shit hotel. <laughs> Fucking had some guys like, I like, I, I was like, ch like some people that were around Chief Keef at the time, they picked me up, took me here, blah, blah. blah. These other guys scooped me, went downtown, went shopping, went to the water tower, saw that shit for the first time, then went down to the Wild 100s and shit. Yeah. She was pretty crazy. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell no way. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know. But you were just like on the internet and like had discovered the whole drill music thing was yeah, popping. Yeah, and, and, and I, and I got, like... and I got, and I built relationships with some guys that like I, I could trust. And like when I went out there, you know, they had me. They took me around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Took me to exclusives. Like, like I did all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So. But ate, by yourself, ate, ate you didn't roll with anybody from yeah. Here, with you? you by know? yourself. Yeah. That's crazy. So, yeah. so what was Chief Keef like? I mean, I don't know if I ever give him his due. Like, like he's such a legend in certain certain sectors. Like, did he live up to the hype of working with them and getting to know that whole scene? Um, yeah, well, I feel like Chief Keef, like, he, like the whole like drill mu music scene that he created, and like, I feel like he even then just like birthed the whole like ignorance of youth rap. Mm. Like, I feel like a lot of shit wouldn't be happening right now mm. if it wasn't for him, right? And especially the Migos too. I feel like I feel like the Migos and Chief Keef are like the top influential people of like right now mm -hmm. yeah. in music like overall right but from chicago you moved to atlanta you like live like, with the migos no right? i i stayed I, I like went to chicago because some people on the internet they said i I lived in chicago mm -hmm. I, I went to chicago a little busy like, you know what I'm okay i did not move to chicago <laughs> okay. from canada at 16 years old okay just you know making sure saying? going to live in the wild no you know what i'm saying but then when i like then i was like yo i need to get my sh my my music into the atlanta music scene mm -hmm. like i felt like it was like the presence of just being in Atlanta and just getting your music out there is so strong, right? Right. And it's such an important part of music. So that's when I found these guys, the Migos, on live mixtapes before they blew up. I'm like, on live mixtapes. These guys are fire. Like, at first, like, I was listening to their shit, and I'm like, this shit's so different. I, I honestly, I didn't know if I, like, liked the music mm. at first, but mm -hmm. I was like, yo, like, this is so different. Like, I know this is going to be something. Something special, right? unique like, about like, it. Like, I yeah. felt like I caught a wave before it was the wave. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You remember so, what song it was? Um, that you heard? It might have been like even like no label like Pax, um, lean like this, some mm -hmm. shit like some like like way back like like the old no label, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And then like I started like fucking with them. Um, I contacted. I used to have like this like little method I'd do on Twitter. I'd like, <laughs> I like if I if I want to hit up Elliot Wilson, I'd type in Elliot Wilson and find like your cousin and hit up your find cousin. Yeah, you heard like a skip of the flipper. Thing, yeah, right? you know what I mean? so like I just so that's why that's why I did. I'd type in Migo and I see all the Migo guys and I, I just hit up skip of the flipper. You know, and Me, he was Migo like, skip of You can have any beats you want. Just I'm play like, that yo, shit for Quavo. I'm like, and yo, take off of them. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna give you, a, I'm gonna give you a pack of beats. Just give, just let, <laughs> just let Quavo and take off. Hear these beats. Because Offset was locked up at the time, mm -hmm. That's so crazy. so these guys, so he 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 played them. He's like, yo, right now, like he was just like he was like engineering for them and stuff. Like they're, they're boys, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. like, help with your boys, you fuck with the music and shit, all that. He he played them the beats and they're like, yo, these beats are fire. Like they just made a smash. Keep keep sending them. And then that's when like they they called me like, yo, you need to get down there. They flew me out there. And like my mom was scared again. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Flying Dolo yeah. to Atlanta, you know. And then that's like that was like a long time ago. They were like they were like they were like staying in the studio on Metropolitan and shit yeah. in Atlanta. Like this is like 
like back in the day shit, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Uh-huh. With P and stuff, so they shout out P, shout out Coach, shout out Migos. Okay, all so that. there was all that embracement for like jump, Rich the right? Kid was there, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I was shout say, out who's Rich. The fourth Migos, is it you or Rich the Kid? Shit, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The fourth or the fifth? I think right? it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so was it like a real workshop? You guys were just working. It was records? a workshop. These guys were living in there, like making music. The band, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like we made Emma Smith in there, like you know what I'm saying? That's when like. The dab was like really created, mm. you know what I'm saying? Just like, you said M- Edmund Smith record before Pipe It Up was the birth of the dab. Hell right? yeah, you can look it up. Yeah, mm. you can look that shit up. That was like what 2012, some 2013, and they're dabbing in that video, so people can't, you know what I'm saying? I you said know. that was just Quavo excited, right? Was yeah, he was like, just he was... excited. That was just like emphasizing just like how hard the beat was on <laughs> when the beat dropped. Just going, oh, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. That's how it started. It wasn't called the dab. But how does it go from like working with them at first and then you actually just live with them? Like what was it? Is this the chemistry from jump just felt like I just yeah, need to like, be around this to help just, them? Just build grinding, this? you know what I'm saying? Wanting to be around, like really hungry and focused and really being like driven on what I'm trying to do. Like like I really wanted this to happen, you know? Hmm. And I really didn't want anything else. I didn't there was no plan B. This was all I wanted to do, you know? Yeah. And I had to make it happen. So like, you know. I just kept going down to Atlanta, and then I started staying with them. Started going on tour with them. Started being the sprinter with these guys all the time. <laughs> like really, really built, like really built, like a yeah. like a like a relationship and a bond, like like with their families, like everything, you know. Yeah. So these are like like family to me, you know. Yeah. Like my mom knows these guys. Their moms know me. Yeah. Like it's a real. And that was a tough time because with Offset incarcerated and the drama <clears throat> with the label and stuff like three hundred, like. That was a tough time for them. Like they yeah, had like, faced a little bit of success. Like when I, but when I started, like, when I started seeing these guys too, that's like like around the time when Offset got out too. Mm. So they were starting to get piped up too. Mm. And Offset all the time, he'd look at me and he always have his mug on. I thought I didn't <laughs> thought he didn't like me. Yeah, I was gonna ask you right. what was that adjustment like? I was like, I was like, I don't think he likes me. I was, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was just like, I was like more shy at the time. Like you know what I'm saying? I was like, I was like 17 years old. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No chains, no like. You know what I'm saying? Like, these who's guys. this saucy white boy? I'm, I was around studio. these. I was around these guys. Like, yo, I need some chains, man. I'm be on stage with these guys. I need to go buy some little chains, whatever. I need to do something, you know? Because these guys have me on tour. They're pushing me on on stage with my songs and yeah. shit, trying to get me like used to like, yo, this is your song. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, how long yeah. were you staying in Atlanta for? I would just I would go for like a couple months at a time. We'll stay with them. Go back home. Oh, okay. Go go back out there, go back home. But it was like I was out there for min- like minutes at a time, like good time, you know. Mm. Then when did your mom realize? Okay, he's okay. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know because that's when they were on like you know what I'm saying. I'm not gonna say they're on their bullshit, but you know they were in the, the news for one foot in, one foot out. <laughs> they were they were in the news for like like little stuff all the time. So yeah. like she's probably worried. Right. Yeah, but yeah. you know they're good guys. They're my dogs. You know. But you say your I, dad believed in you from jump. I know he passed away yeah, a few years ago. Yeah. I be my pops. Right. Yeah. He believed in me from the jump. He was telling me, "Yo, like, don't quit. Keep going. Don't stop. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Everyone wants me to go to college, do this, do that. I was gonna go to college for business because I like making money. Mm. I didn't know what, the, what <laughs> how I was gonna do that. I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Every everyone had their little ways of making money back in the day. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was making a little bit of bread, but like, <laughs> there was a point where I was like, yo, I gotta, I gotta stop everything and just start making music because this music's gonna take me a lot farther than anything else would. Right. You didn't want no job. No, I never had a job. Mm. Never had a job. Never. I'm left-handed. I told my mom since I was in grade seven, I was different. <laughs> like, I'm, some weird shit. I'm like, yo, mom, I'm different. I'm left-handed. Like, I'm not like all these other kids in class. Like, I can't work a job. Yeah. I can't have a boss. Like, I can't do that. And Quavo's left-handed too, right? Yeah. Like, Me, Quavo, and Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anyone else. So what's special about being left-handed? Yeah, like, Wait, who else? left-handed too? Wait, there's lefty. someone else too. Wait, so, someone Lucky just... Lucky lefties? Hey. <laughs> someone, yo, someone just told me someone else was left-handed the other day too, and I was like, what? And it's something like you can't cut paper or something like what's the what's what is I, it I couldn't cut paper in grade two. They had, I they had ordered me left handed scissors. Because <laughs> like no, I'm dead serious. Because like the way I don't know the the scissors are like opposite ways. So like, right. I was like I was like I remember being in grade two like man what the fuck I can't cut yeah. like I can't cut paper and shit. Fuck this shit. Now you get an older paper. Maybe, exactly. Maybe that's why I didn't want a job. Yeah. Like, yeah, but music was always home. You said your pop was a guitarist, right? Yeah. Did he ever get Amazing. placement? Was he like, was he? Oh, uh, he just like, you know what I'm saying? Like back in the day, he was like in bands and doing all that shit, you know? Yeah. Like unfortunately back in that generation, you know, like people were like kids and stuff are more like independent by the age of 17 on their own and stuff. Yeah. Like you guys, you know all that, you know? So yeah, like yeah. he didn't really have the opportunity to like chase his dream. He kind of had to like 
stay focused and just like maintain and like get the money you know what i'm saying i was yeah. more a little, take care of his family yeah i was more like i come from a middle class family i had like so i knew that like that's why I, I took advantage of my of my opportunity i was like yo i'm 16 and and everyone's going to high, high school and college and this and that everything's so all planned of, out for them instead yeah. of like going to college for five years coming out and being in debt 50k i can literally just make beats and work hard and this just gonna work mm. and like i wasn't even thinking about it at, at that time like that but like yeah we went crazy though I went crazy. Shout yeah. out to me. <laughs> but how did you go from like you see yeah, like a Pearl Jam drum kit to like hip hop? I think you said something like you guys saw the game hated to love it video, and that impacted you. That impacted me a lot to like start listening to rap music. I was like, this is fire, like mm. you know. And then I started, I started like playing on drums like uh, Travis Barker remixes and shit. Mm. Yeah. And then that's what kind of got me from drums to electric drums. And then, and then one of my boys introduced me to FL Studio, and I was like, shit. But I was like trying to use it and stuff, taught myself how to use it. Mm. And that's when I sold my electric drums for an MPK-49 keyboard. Mm. And then just started. I didn't even know how to play piano. I was just like, I remember being in music class. They wouldn't let me play the piano. They wanted me always play the trumpet. So I dropped out of music class in high school. Mm. And like, I would always just go on the piano and just like randomly be present. Shit, my boy told me, he's like, yo, you be playing like Beethoven and shit. Like, mm. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was just like randomly hitting shit, not even knowing what I'm yeah. hitting, but just like music's patterns to me. Like, so they just like, I don't know. You just hit the right patterns and it makes it sound good. And you started isolating yourself too, right? Like you just yeah, really I had to. Focused on people were making fun of me, making beats. People were kind of like this. Oh, you why you can't make rap music? Mm. Like it was like a lot of shit. So I was like, yo, like I just like cut a lot of people off. Mm. Stayed out home during Christmas, making beats by myself the whole Christmas break. Two weeks, come back to school. I was like, yo, I didn't see you. Oh, whatever, whatever. What? I was like, yo, making beats, man. I don't know. But your first placement was with Soldier Boy, right? My first, my first technical placement was with uh, YB the rock star, your boy, mm. the guy from the Bay. He was mm. signed to Akon at the time. Mm. That was like, so like people, people at first were telling me, oh, like wait till your beats are better to like start getting placements. I was like, yo, fuck this shit. I was like, three <laughs> months into, I was, in, I was like three months into making beats, sending people beats on Twitter, mm. and my beats sounded like shit. Like, yeah, I say even the Soldier Boy that they said that was the first one. You you hate that track, right? You think that wasn't like one of your best or just wasn't... hell no. It was like my. <laughs> 20th beat I made not, mm. not definitely not my best yeah. but were you getting money from that like, like what was nah, the thing like, yeah. I wasn't getting money for a while that's yeah. what people gotta understand people like people nowadays like it's like like you, you definitely gotta know your worth but like you definitely gotta p pay your dues and like understand the game and like you gotta you gotta play the game and work work and play your cards properly to be able to get in the position to make money like yeah. like I feel like like I was financially starting to make money probably like a year and a half two years ago you know what wow. I'm saying People thought I was rich five years ago mm. making Evan Smith. Yeah. Mm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But like it's just like that's moving with the times. I was like those times I was like jugging the Western Union, Money Gram, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know, you want you want you want to beat beat for a thousand, send me a thousand. I wasn't even sending snippets. Cause I found out like people like Lex Luger and these guys were sending people snippets and people just looped the snippet. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, yo, fuck that. If people want my beats, you gotta send me the money and I'm gonna send you like a couple beats and you can pick, just pick from the beat. Mm. I just wanted the money. Like I was like, yo. Like my my Western Union was flagged. They thought I was doing fraud and shit. Like, <laughs> like it was like I was like young. I was like you know what I'm saying. I was always going yeah. to the Western Union picking up money. That's how I, like I started everything. Because but to see that now, like a lot of producers are complaining that you know they're not getting credit or they're not. What's well, on paid. a mixtape? Yeah, the paperwork available. isn't right. Yeah. Hey, back in the day, nobody was getting paid off no mixtape. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So like you know what I'm saying I don't know. So you almost have to pay dues in that sense. And you're, you're that's what right? I felt yeah. like I paid enough dues. Like I did my thing. You know what I'm yeah. saying. So. But yeah, you definitely have to pay your dues. People got, I don't know. Was Pipe It Up the first one where you felt like that was like... That was probably like the first record like I really got... Proud like, of like production? I got, yeah, and that was like the, probably like the first record where like they I got paid for like a beat from like a major mm -hmm. and then like, a, yeah, a record that like made like money because it was... Like, that was a big... I feel like that, that record was like a big moment in itself just for music and just like... Just like rap in general, and just like how the dab blew up and kids were dabbing, Hillary Clinton was dabbing. <laughs> it went, it went to like, it went to like football. Cam Newton. It went to like, it went to like soccer over in Europe. It went to like mm -hmm. hockey. It just like it was yeah. just like, it was crazy. Like you know what I'm saying? Now like there's like you could dab on Fortnite. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just crazy. Right. What do you What do you make of the Amigos? Like obviously you have respect for them, and it was part of their journey of wanting to be stars. But then bad and bougie happens, and then. They go to a whole other level. Like, what's it like to witness, and how how do you feel they've changed or not changed with all the success they've had recently? I don't think they've changed. I think like the money's changed, the jewelry, <laughs> the jewelry's changed, 
The car lots have changed. Right. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think they've changed. You know what I'm saying? Those are my dogs, you know? Yeah. And just to see that come up was, like, really good. Because, like, around that time, it's, like, that's when I kind of, like, I didn't, like, separate myself from them. Like, we're family for life. But, like, that's, like, when I kind of, like, took some steps to the left and been, like, yo, like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I gotta build like my own. Mm, my yeah. own. I'm, I'm I, like at the end of the day, like I want be, you to remember me, like Murder Beats. You know, what I'm saying? Yeah. so I started like go do my own thing. That's like when I first came to LA for the first time and stuff. So I was like getting in the studio with different artists. Like I was only in the studio with the Migos like all the time. So like when I yeah. even saw like different artists process in the studio, I was like, what the fuck, like why they're writing shit like. You know what I'm saying? The Migos freestyle, everything. I didn't know. <laughs> See, like Quavo got eight it. songs done already. I didn't, right? I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know people had song right. Like I didn't know any of this shit. Like yeah. the Migos, like freestyle, everything. So just, so just like for me to be be coming up in my little lane that I, when I moved off and then like just to see them come up and now like yeah. we're both just like on top of shit right now like yeah. I just feel like that's the best blessing ever. Why you ever felt like pressure to be like an in-house producer for them or like that whole camp? Like I kind of was for like oh. a couple years. You know what I'm saying? But then I felt like I I, I wanted to be like more i wanted just like murder beats to be known as murder beats right. and stuff as you your know? own entity yeah because yeah, i wanted like, that I'm, I'm always going to be attached to the amigos like you like we got motorsport we got more coming mm -hmm. we're always making music they're going to be all over my album i'm always going to be on theirs i'm always going to have shit with qc artists you know what i'm saying little baby yachty all right. these guys you know what i'm saying i'm always going to like that's fuck still home P team and yeah. coaching them you know yeah. mm -hmm. like qc like that's like they really did this they really did this shit like like I'm They're from a growth overall too to see how big yeah they like become, yeah. like you know like my come up story is like very unique in the way that I came up from Canada like a white boy trap music all that shit but like just for them to be like as successful as they are as an independent label is like a crazy success story too yes it because then back in the day everyone was doubting them mm. the majors didn't want to help them they and battled like, the majors and look right? what yeah. look what they did now yeah like that's crazy you know yeah it's hard to do that it makes it makes everyone think they can do it yeah. Right. You know? So what was that transition to going to LA? Like, why did you decide that was the home base? And then who did you first start working with out there that made you feel like this is like the right move? The first person I started working with in LA, um, maybe Nipsey also. Mm. I hit him up on Twitter at like 3 a.m. I was like, yo, <laughs> got some beats. He was like, yo, pull up. He DM me, he's like, yo, pull up a studio tomorrow at 3 p.m. Pulled up a studio. He like ordered pizza. And like, and like, <laughs> hey, so look at this was like, this was like, three like three and a half years ago mm -hmm. okay so we made one song that night and the song we made that night was grind grind grind, grind on, on my, my life, life which yeah. finally made the album right? which, which came out what what like this year four months ago this year yeah, yeah. yeah so that's why i like i didn't even i was like fuck i hate this beat like, <laughs> I, made, I made the beat in 2014 but it was wow. called like a video game or something like that right the tom clancy video game was it yeah i think it was but then it kind of got like remixed or Something more yeah, it was just right. like it was just like a lot. Remember, of, like, he put it on, it made, he put it, it on streaming, and then album. took it off. Yeah, it, first, it made so. his album. It and then and then and then they told me it didn't make his album. Mm, yeah, and I was like, oh shit. And then it made his album, and then like it didn't make his album, and then like <laughs> it made his album, and then I was like, fuck, I don't even know if I, like I want this beat to come out. Right. Like the song was far, but I don't know like the beat like. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because the beat it's so is so outdated. You, you did and, it, they, yeah. and they even wanted, like, yo, like, you can touch it up if you want to. I was like, nah, like, I don't it's even want to. It's a wanna, great record. I don't even want to touch it up. But yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying? It holds I remember up. I went to the studio. I was like, yo, Nip, we need to make you some club shit. Mm. Like, mm. like, and that's 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 how we made that record, too. So that's a whole other story. But yeah. I don't know who else, though, I worked with yeah. out here for the first time. But you like the vibe of it? Like, because your base now is in LA, right? Yeah. And what's that yeah. transition been like? It's just like, it's just good because all the studios are out here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Everyone comes out here for work. Like I, I don't I don't go to Atlanta to see the boys anymore. Like I see them I see the Migos out here like like probably like a couple times a week, couple times every other week. Like yeah. I see them all the time. Like everyone's out here, you know? Like yeah. I can just go go see go see two chains, go see anyone from Atlanta out here, right? Yeah. So Do you um, make records for people in mind? Because like the Travis Scott butterfly effect, it sounds like it was tailored for him, or was it that it just something you had in the it, it like when I made that beat, it was like I had a couple people in mind, you know, but yeah, Travis when I said it to Travis that was a smash. Mm. Yeah. Like we knew the smash. Like I like something the beat. He was recording that shit. I like Facetimed him. He was like, we were he he was he, we were like on Facetime when he was like finishing the record, like recording and shit in Houston. Mm. And he just put that shit out, and that was like, that was crazy because like that record got like, twelve million views in under twenty four hours, or had like some crazy amount of views in like two days. And then he's like, they just they just went with it. Yeah. Like they just they they started they pushed they pushed the version off of YouTube. I mean, off of SoundCloud, that was really just my two track, 
and then Travis recording himself, yeah. bouncing it and yeah. putting it on the internet. Mm-hmm. And that was like the, the the record that like got out there. So like we didn't even get really to like fully mix and master the record and like yeah. get like a really like super radio cleaner like yeah. mixed version right. and all that shit, you know? So I saw something when you were saying that you respect Travis that sonically he's so sound with how he approaches his music makes Hell it yeah. very unique, right? Hell yeah. Sonically I feel like Travis is the best. Like like I feel like I feel like that's what like Kanye's really good at, like this like sonics of music, you know? And like Travis just like the with the way he uses auto tune, with the way he uses the other plugins, you know what I'm saying? And just like it just like coming together like with like his sound of beats. Yeah. It just sounds like amazing, you know? Yeah. Right. And talk about Quavo, cause like it seemed like you you both had this reputation of being able to work really fast, right? Like, is is Quavo? What what is it about Quavo that makes him special? And like, why are you why are you guys able to create co- content so fast, like in the studio? Quavo's a genius, man. Um, I don't know. I can't really explain. Like, it's too much too much yeah. shit, you know. <clears throat> but yeah, Quavo's just like a great artist. Just go in freestyle, like you know what I mean. Just like play a beat, be like, go pull that shit up, boom. Mm-hmm. That's but he'll just lay a quick melody or something <laughs> down that, and make it like a... That's how he made Pipe It Up. Like, he's like, yo. Yeah. Like, I, like, skipped over the beat. He's like, wait, go back. I'm like, I, I didn't even like the beat. I was like, nah, like, nah. Mm-hmm. Like, he's like, no, go back to that beat. And he's like, Pipe It Up. Pipe It Up. Pipe. I'm like, yo, go go cut that. Go cut that. <laughs> you know, he pulls up the beat, goes in the booth. Like, and this is, like, in, like, the house. You know what I'm saying? Just goes, cuts it, comes to the studio. He's like, yo. I felt like this is like how I felt when we made Versace. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, that's a special, that's a special one right there. Like you yeah. just knew it, you know. Yeah. If you're saying that, that's special. But yeah, Quay was really talented, like melodies, rap, everything. Mm-hmm. I feel like all the Migos are like take off. I feel like he's like one of the best rappers in the game. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. He's like got crazy flows and bars and all that. And Offset's snapping right now too. Offset's going crazy yeah. too. Mm-hmm. I don't really have a favorite Migo, you know. <laughs> I know if y'all yeah. were gonna ask that question, you know what I'm saying? No, but they started doing it. I remember it was like they started loving Offset's get like Quavo looked at got the first recognition and then all of a sudden it was like all oh, offset offsets gets features are dope and then nah but take off the quiet storm like nobody you Yeah, know. like cause like you know when the Migos first came out, it was always like they were like hashtagging Quavo on the hook. Cause yeah. it was always Quavo on the hook. And I, I think Offset's first time he laid a hook was on my beat. It was called Trenches. It was like, I think it was, it was offset, take off and skip, mm-hmm. and like we made, I made that beat in like the back room on like a cardboard cardboard box like in the basement on their old house, and like we made that record right there, and like that was like offsets like, I think Quavo was actually sick at the time or something. That's why he didn't get on it, but like that was offsets like first hook mm-hmm. on a record. Like that's on YouTube and shit too as a music <laughs> video, and that was hard. Like you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah, now Offset looking, he's crushing it and doing a bunch of hooks. I know the M- Atlanta MC you have a lot of success with is Two Chains. Yeah, you know, Four AM and It's a Vibe. Like those are the two of the standout records from his last album. Like yeah, shout that... out Two Chains, man. We What's got it? some, we got some new shit on his album too. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, got some new shit. But I just saw you recently, like, with, and your mom's in Two Chains too, right? Everybody yeah. all together. Like, what was that? I saw t- well, Two Chains invited me to his house last week. You know what I'm saying? He explained to me his album and stuff. So I was like, yo, like, I'm definitely gonna. Give you some crazy shit to p- pipe up this album, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Gave him a pack of beats to sit around and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? And then we ended up making a little play, you know. Y'all gonna see what that is, but you know, okay. We got a nice little record on there, but yeah, two chains. You know, he was it. I was performing with him. He, I, he, I was opening up for him in Toronto, Mother's Day and stuff. So I brought my mom. You know what I'm saying? He's got make his make his mama proud. Song, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So I brought my mom backstage to meet two chains. She was happy and stuff. <laughs> Congratulated him on his uh, proposal and all that shit. So. Yeah, shout out to James. So working with him with those two records was it like just as seamless as it was with the Migos and these other guys. Like the chemistry is just like yeah. That. I sent those beats. I sent those beats mm. to him. Okay. Actually, I made the it's a vibe beat here at No Name because mm. when I and I that's when I, I kept seeing all them um those Calabasas OVO Kanye. Billboards popping up everywhere. Right. <laughs> I was like, yo, if they're actually making this album, I'm going to make some hard, old school, like, dedication type shit. So mm-hmm. that's when I made the beat. You know what I'm saying? I made the beat, and then um, I just left it with Che Pope, and then Che, che gave, gave the alley up and gave the beat to 2 Chains. Like, yo, this, mm-hmm. this might be a dope beat for you. Mm-hmm. And he said it to him. So shout out Che Pope. He's a legend. You know, he's a good mentor yeah. to me right now, too, and shit, too. So Cool. 
Absolutely. I know you got somebody really bossing you around, man. This guy's a side Khaled, man. He's yeah, the man is some beats for this you know, Khaled's record, man. Yes. What's going on with that, man? Side, you know, he's a, he's a <laughs> boss baby. He's a definitely a boss baby. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's the he's the baby of all bosses. He, he needs that babies. final mix, man. Come yeah, on, murder. You know, so yeah. I don't know, me and Khaled sat down with Assad. Yeah, you went to Miami for that, right? No, I was here. Okay. But, you know what I'm saying? We, we sat down with Assad, you know, talking with Alan. <laughs> Had him on FaceTime. He was giving me some pointers and shit, you know, so. Shout out to Assad. Shout out to Khaled. But what about your own project? Keep God, keep God First 2? Is yeah. that still coming? Yep. Keep, so Keep God First was a, a mixtape that I leaked on the internet. Everyone kind of yeah. got mad at me. Put it you had a lot of big out. names on it. Yeah, that's why, yeah. right? Like that's a label's yeah, it, it nightmare. Was successful, though. It was, <laughs> it was kind of successful, and everyone had, like after it came out was like didn't really sweat it because like it really like was like I feel like it was like a key moment for everything. Like I had like a couple offsets so, solo songs on there before, before he was Bad really out there like out. that. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like it just like just everything. Like I had like Playboy Cardi on there before he popped. I had Pressa on there that Novocaine song that yeah. made him pop from Toronto. I had like a bunch of other songs on there. Just like everything. Just like did like I feel like it was just good for culture. It was like and a you lot just of pushed the people. button like you, nobody knew you were doing I just it like that just... shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Drop that shit on over your radio. It was go time. Right? Your manager Corey couldn't talk you out of it. It was like go time. Nah. <laughs> you know? But like you mentioned, Pressa, like he's having his, his moment in Canada. Like with that yeah. Novocaine record. Like what's so special about him, and why do you guys work so well together? This is like a. Like his voice is dope, yeah. and he has real bars. And like when he spits his music and shit, like he's really like saying bars that like you've never heard a rapper say. Like these aren't re like a lot of rappers have re recycled bars, and artists will recycle each other's bars and like similar bars and shit. But like I feel like like shit, Presser says is like he really like he's really like saying some shit that you've never heard before, right. or like the way he'll like rap about a certain thing. It's like different than like you normally hear it. So it's like I feel like that's like the wow factor and his voice and like. The uh, way he looks is like he's young and everything. Right. There's, there's a couple of people I fuck with, you know what I'm saying? Like Bugs, Prime Boys, like Lil Gino in Chicago. Like there's a bunch of people, you know. So shout out Presta. Oh. But yeah, so Keep God First too. That album, I'm working on it right now. I got a lot of crazy names on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is gonna be like a major album. Mm. It's gonna be pushed properly. We're gonna, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be. It's Why gonna be Keep big. God First as, as the theme? Because well, like I really found God through music. You know what I'm saying? Like at the beginning stages, like that's what like like Quavo and these guys like they were always like, yo, like you gotta believe in God, like blah blah blah. So I like really started like get faith in God, and that's really how like my my career started like, like I started like get better and I start seeing like results and like praying for stuff and stuff happening in my life and that that's mm. what gave me like the faith and like you know what I'm saying? Just like really believe in God. So I'd always write keep God first all the time on Twitter. Mm -hmm. At night, every night before I went to bed, after I prayed, said, keep God first. Well, right. yeah. I'd always say that. And then one night I was like driving, I was driving to see my mom and I was like, yo, it was literally like before I was like, I was going to like drop the mixtape. I was like, yo, I'm just going to name this shit. I'm going to name it. Keep God first. Yeah. Keep God first. It's such a strong like, statement. Right. It's, say like, it's something yeah. I say all the time. You know what I'm saying? And like me tweeting all the time. It's like, it's I'm, I'm not just tweeting it to tweet it. I'm tweeting it to remind you to keep God first too. You yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And your God could be anyone. Like I'm not saying. Yeah. I'm not saying a certain religion's God either. Like, your God can be whoever you want your God to be in any religion, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I just want to keep God first. And that's why, like, I want my debut album to be Keep God First, too. Right. Yeah. No, I think it's interesting because you see so much now in hip-hop about people being comfortable enough to talk about vulnerability and depression and sort of mental health, right? And I think that you express, like, your whole energy is always, like, you try to stay positive. You're very driven. You go for what you want. You know what I mean? And your faith, like, and putting it out there. Like, why do you think you've been able to, like, be able to be strong mentally and, and you know, really pay your dues and get yourself to the point that you're at now? I don't know. My parents made a talented kid. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Like, like I don't know. No, but really this know. business can mess it's you just, up and, like, you know. Yeah, like, I just really way. had the tunnel vision. I don't know. I guess I got it from my parents' work ethic, but I really got the tunnel vision, the focus, and just, like, finding God and just, like, keeping positive messages and just staying i just i found out how to like like how how i like kind of like isolated myself in high school from people i really got to like know myself i feel like you really got to like spend a long time and learn yourself to be able to like like fully like manifest like big stuff to happen and like speak things into existence and yeah. control your life and control the universe and stuff you right. know like yeah I feel like that's a big role in my career. Like, even right now, like, I'll say something three weeks ago, and now it's happening right now. Like, 
So it's just like, I don't know, just keeping positive at all times. Mm. You said it's like a producer's period again. You still feel that way? Yep. Mm. I feel like producers are the new artists, thousand percent. Mm. Especially for Canada. Yeah. And like <laughs> with the new DJs too. Right. With the new, I don't know. It's just like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, how, what was it? Like 10 years ago, you had like Scott Storch, Timbaland, all these guys, mm. you know, Dr. Dre, all these big guys. And like, they were like known in the spotlight. You know what I'm saying? Like everyone, if you were like a music fan, not even just a rap fan, if you were a music fan, like you knew that like, like Timbaland was working with like Nelly Furtado and like all these mm-hmm. people, you know what I'm saying? These crazy records. I feel like that and it's becoming that again. I feel like there's like you've got like your like all star lineup of producers that people know yeah. if you listen to music or if you listen to just rap or just you know what I'm saying? Yeah. In general now. So I think I saw you with Scott Storch and you got some dogs or something in the, in the Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cooking up with his dogs, you know, cooking up <laughs> you always gotta cook up with the dogs, you know, I'm always cooking up like with real dogs. dogs. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you had your own DJ set in Hawaii and you're going on tour with the endless summer G-Z tour. G-Z. tour, right? Yo, that was the first time I ever DJed in Hawaii too, and I didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> I literally learned like the night the, the night before in my hotel room and like I was like learning <laughs> at sound check and I like and like when people were like about to like start walking in the club and shit. Well yeah, that was that was crazy. So you just pressing like, the buttons with a No, nah, I was DJing. DJing like, DJ. Like, like yeah, like I don't know. I'd be procrastinating. <laughs> yeah. I saw Italy too, you was doing a set of stuff. Yeah, I, I did uh I DJ'd the uh after party in Marcel Berlin's fashion show. He flew me out to like sit for Wait, say row. that brand again. This is Marcel- Kanye. I don't know what brand it is. Yeah. Say it again. <laughs> um, Marcelo Berlon. He's a uh, he's a designer in Milan, Italy, mm-hmm. and um, he's like a part owner, um, in like uh, Palms Angels, mm-hmm. Off Way, a bunch of stuff. You know, cool. shout out Marcelo Berlon. Right. So he had me over there. You know what I'm saying? I saw like a bunch of his collabs. He had coming out with like the NBA and like a bunch of stuff. You can find his stuff in the stores. Like you can go yeah. to, like. Whatever stories you were shot by, you're gonna see his shit, you know. That's that my game up. Yeah, his shit. It's <laughs> just fire, you know what I'm saying? Right. We, we got we got the Murder Balan clothing brand coming soon. Murder like, Balan. You know what I'm saying? You gotta see it, Saks, Barney's, all that. Oh shit. But G, so the Jeezy, you're doing a DJ set on the tour? Yeah. I'm just like, how many I'm records like are you gonna play on Murder Beats records? <laughs> I don't know. I like to I like when I DJ like when I DJ sets and stuff, I like to play music I like to listen to. Like if I'm in the whip, I, I don't listen to my music. Mm. Really? Yeah, I don't know. How do you? Most of it's on the radio. Yeah, How right? do you avoid it? Like I don't listen to the radio. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to playlists. The publisher you know hates that one. I listen to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all listen to the radio, you know. So, <laughs> you know, I listen to playlists. You know, like Spotify yeah. playlists, Apple playlists, Title yeah. playlists. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Get them all in, murder. Get them all yeah, in, baby. All <laughs> Amazon playlists, Google playlists, YouTube. A big record on playlist motorsport. You keep mentioning that. Like I also saw that you said that. Like a lot of times you're very critical. Like you said of the Nipsey beats that you make, you're your harshest critic. But that was one you felt like that beats hard. Like stick yeah, my like, chest out. I, I literally out. made that on a speaker like this in my boy's condo, the size of like this room. Mm. You know, it's in Toronto, and I named it Sixth Anthem. And that's when Drake was finishing more life. I sent it to Drake like, Yo, you need to like, I think you need to fuck with this beat. I, I don't remember exactly what happened, but then, um. I was in the I was in New York with the Migos and I just I I pulled up the beat and Quavo he's like yo pull this shit up he went in the booth and made we made motorsport right down the spot you just start saying motorsport blah blah, blah the hook it was a bit more than just pipe it up pipe it up you know what I'm <laughs> he said motorsport he said you know what I'm saying he he did it though and like I was like yo this shit's fire yeah right I had the version with just him on it and I was like bumping that shit in the whip all the time I'm like man this shit's fire yeah. and then when he told me he made his little honcho play. I was like, oh shit, it's supposed to be a huge. So what do you think really ended up being this controversial yeah. on show play of like Nikki on the record, Cardi on the record, lyrics changing? Like what I like it. I don't know. I'm yeah. a fan of Cardi and Nikki, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I feel like they're both like very talented. You got I do on her record on, on Cardi's yeah, record with know. SZA. Yeah. Right. And you know, uh Nikki's album's coming. Yeah. You know, uh oh. So you might you might you might be, you know, never know. Fans got it, you know what I'm saying? Stay know. tuned. Yeah. Murder beats with the queen. But do you get involved with that? Are you mixing? Well, you know, I already did no frauds. I did no frauds. Oh, yeah, that's right, right. Nope. And what up? Is there anything else? I'll, oh yeah, no, motorsport. Yeah, right. But yeah, no frauds was like pretty big. That I feel like that was like a moment too. I feel. Yeah, I feel like a lot of my records are like moments. Like I don't know. Yeah. Like, no frauds was like a moment. Like it was like a big comeback. Like, her back like, with Drake like, and young Wayne. Money, yeah. Young money all back together. Like you know what I'm saying? So Reunion. and motorsport. That's like a big moment for yeah. music. Like. The Migos getting Nicki Minaj and Cardi B on the same record at like a controversial time. Yeah. Where I feel like the like the blogs and stuff were kind of like amping it up yeah. to like be yeah. more than what it was, you know what I'm saying? But like it's still it's like that's like an amazing record, you yeah. know. It was very like I feel like that was like it was like that like 
like like all the guys like that record too, but it was also like a female driven record too because mm-hmm. they were both on it. Yeah, and they both go in. Mm-hmm. It's the yeah, final version. Know, they're so, both rapping. So it's awesome. And then this like after that, and then having nice for what, which is another female record. You know, like the girls definitely like a murder beats yeah. music. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, even no shopping had the controversy because it was like is Drake talking about Joe Budden on that record? Like, like probably was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm saying you end up being part of these records that are like can be controversial, yeah, but also just a big cultural moments. Yeah. But do you when you make the beat, is it like it's almost like are you are you once you get the beat and it's layered down, are you involved with that? Are you mixing like everything to the end, or is it like one certain point is out of your hands? Like, like in terms of a record like that. Well, a mix is never out of my hands. I usually talk engineers now not even to touch my beats because mm-hmm. like i feel like i have like such like like you know like when my beat comes on it's gonna i'm gonna have the hardest Those drums kick. gotta be right like, baby. motorsport was the hardest hitting song at coachella this year mm. like i know yeah. for a fact i didn't even go i know that i probably, <laughs> I probably heard i probably heard the shit from the studio here you know what right. i'm saying like like i just know like my drum how my drums hit and like a lot of stuff nowadays like the engineers are just like they're not even really like mixing down my record i'm telling them yo mix that shit on a two track like you don't even really need to touch the shit. You're gonna fuck it up. <laughs> half the time, half the time when people be mixing my shit, it's just like when I hear, I'm just like, what the fuck? like you know, they just fucked up my whole mix. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. like I feel like the way I mix music, it's like it's not technically correct. Like mm-hmm. how like you go to school and be like, oh, like this is how you're supposed to mix. Like your levels are supposed to be here and here and here and here. I crank my drums in a way where it's just like it's not supposed to be like that, but like that's what makes me me. Mm. You know? Yeah, like it could be off, but it's right to you, and yeah. and, and, and it's and different, different, different sounds and drum, different snares and different. And that's and that's different. how like a lot of the goats are, like you know what I'm saying, like the way like Boy Wonder's drums are, the way like Mike Dean's synths yeah. are, the way like even going back DJ to RZA, Khaled, RZA and all that. Yeah, and yeah. even even talking like DJ Khaled, like he's like we we, we had a whole conversation about make rec- records and stuff. He's like, you know, my records are always like they're always like like bright, like bright, like and like you know what I'm saying. That yeah. way, and my records are always like heavy drums hard like you know what i'm saying hi hat smacking you in the face all that right yeah. even though you like to be the center of attention with the controversy with the motorsport and you know the no shopping i saw that you tweet that you've seen a lot of producers and artists subtweeting each other in 2018 you said these motherfuckers are turning to ig hoes hey man people gotta stop subtweeting all that shit man i don't know <laughs> I don't know. Everyone just has to keep positive vibes, man. You right. Know, it's yeah. like, why people like you see on the internet, everyone's beefing each other and stuff. Mm. It's like, I don't know. Just stay out of all that shit. Right. But do, do, how do you say so? Stay, again, like, it just seems like you seem very centered. Like, do you. Because I'm mind- focused on myself. Like, yeah. like, I don't know. Like, sometimes you'd be like, oh shit, what's this guy doing? Oh, oh shit, this guy's popping right now. Like, you know, like, I'm trying to, like, people be like, oh, I gotta, like, do what he's doing or like do do something be- better than him like i'm just in my own lane i'm mm. focused on myself mm. you know what i'm saying i definitely listen to music i'm a fan of i'm a fan of other producers i'm a fan of other rappers i'm a fan of other music you know what i'm saying like some of my favorite producers like like south side wheezy's like all these guys like these like i fuck like i fuck with a lot of producers you know right. metro's out here crushing it like yeah. you know but i just like i really like to just focus on myself stay in my own lane keep that tunnel vision on where, where i gotta go because i'm creating my own legacy right yeah, yeah. Ain't no one's gonna look out for you like yourself. Right. At the end of the day. And you're open to collaborations. It seems like that happens a lot in Canada. Like you got Boy Wonder work with everybody, vinyls is work with this person. Like, but you say you're selective though, right? Like Q Beats yeah, is yeah. mostly the guy you do mm-hmm. a lot of stuff with. Right? Yeah, because like it's organic. Like they hit me up a couple years ago on, on Instagram and then like I was like, yo, send me some shit, you know? But like a lot of the stuff, like when I like collaborate with producers like Scott Storch and stuff, like it's mm-hmm. really organic. Like I'll meet him. I met him, I'll meet him, like, in the studio somewhere, like, like, when we were finishing up, like, Birds, this Travis Scott album, mm-hmm. he, like, popped by the studio or whatever, and, like, I met him for the first time, I was like, yo, like, let's link up, like, I like fucking with, like, the OGs and stuff, you know, like, yeah. I like, on, like, my 21st birthday out here, I worked with, like, DJ Paul, mm. like, you know what I'm saying, like, I like, I like doing shit like that, like, yeah. I feel like it's very special, I'm trying to think if there's any other older producers I work with, I think there has, there has but I don't, I don't yeah. know. What do you think of the whole cultural divide, like you mentioned earlier, like, even someone like Smoke Perp, he's kind of affiliated like him and Pump with the whole like fuck J. Cole and that whole thing in nineteen eighty five. That's and just squash now though. I thought it was yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But what's your take on that? Like, do you think it's just a it was just a generational thing? Like why why do you think that sometimes there's that clash of like the new guard not necessarily always paying respect to the artist before them? Maybe someone thought that the sub rap line shot was it against them mm. maybe they thought the shoe fit i don't know yeah. you know what i'm saying that's just how it goes right there's always going to be beef and i feel like i feel like like in rap music especially in urban music like 
that's just part of the that's just part of the culture of rap. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you need you need beefs here and there. You right. need controversy, right? It's just another thing to rap about. <laughs> Instead of rapping about cars, bitches, drugs, money, get at someone's neck. I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of ladies, like you can even create with the ladies in the studio in the party. Like one, two, three, you literally had a party in the studio. Yeah. And you like wanted to impress everybody and you Yeah, just I'd be made... showing sure no up sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes sometimes I like it to be just like me and my boys in the studio or like just me cooking up or whatever. But like sometimes, yeah, just get everyone in the studio and then just like cook some shit up on the spot. Mm. I have to test myself. Is that how it is when we work <laughs> with party next door? Is it that same similar vibe? No, it's more like it's more like just like us. Okay. Like together, you know what I'm saying, cooking up and stuff. I don't, I don't think we've ever had, like, a session where it's just, like, been, like, a bunch of people and stuff. Mm-hmm. Party's definitely, like, a very talented artist. Definitely one of the most talented artists ever. So you said him and Quavo this, are, like, the of most. Of this generation, I think Party's definitely, like, like one of the best. You know, like, his pen game's crazy. Like, no one can touch his pen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like you how you make these definitive statements. You got to. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, like, you know, I'm putting it out there because I don't even, I don't know if people have talked about this before. Right. Yeah. You know? Okay, definitive statements. What What do you because you are critical in your catalog? What do you think are your top five productions? Can nice for what? Nice for what? Four and one four weeks in a row. Definitely nice. Definitely nice for what? Um, does it feel different to have a number one record? Like, what is that? Does that? Uh, Honestly, I thought it was gonna, but then when I woke <laughs> up, it, I, no, it's not. <laughs> I don't know. That's just me though. I'm I'm never I'm I'm the type of person that like I'm never satisfied. Mm. Yeah. Like I'm just never satisfied. Like. Like I'll, I'll I'll want something to happen. I'll know I got a big thing happening. And then when it comes up, I'm just like, all right, like what's next? Yeah, like right. Like that's and I feel like that's what's gonna keep my longevity going and keep me out here for a long time. Like I'm like a different person. The way I think about stuff's a lot different. You mad again? Like Gambino? a lot of people. A lot of people like. Okay. <laughs> a lot of people, if they got number one, they go out, celebrate twenty days or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Maybe take a break. Like my my one boy told me he's like, oh, like if this song goes number one, like. Think you're gonna like take a break like i'm just gonna be like what like i don't <laughs> nah. take fucking breaks dog i'm never gonna take a break like right. you know what i'm saying like i don't know but yeah i don't know definitely blessed to have a number one though i was definitely waiting on it yeah because the migos got one i was like it's i got, I got my grammy nom before they did but then they got their number one before i did so i was like damn i need to get my number what, one what was, right. it, what was the grammy nom on uh just views oh views in general yeah, album, yeah. album of the year rap album of the year whatever okay so, so nice for what's definitely one of your top fives yeah um um, what have I produced? Motorsport. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's like a crazy beat. Mm-hmm. Portland. That beat's crazy. Another double platinum, triple right. platinum. Yeah. One of those. Flutes. Um, maybe it's a vibe for mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. different it is. I'm definitely missing something. I know I one two three, the one two three smoke, smoke per- purple. Yeah, that beat's fire. That's five. But then I'd have to go with, like with you too. Yeah. Like, that's just like different record for me. Right. Honestly, I like the No Frost beat too. I like yeah. I like all my beats. Yeah, yeah. Like except except the first ones. <laughs> like except yeah, what was the Soldier Boy song? Not gonna tell us, right? No. Well, like what Elliot was alluding to with Childish Gambino now number one. Were you upset about that? No, nah, I, I woke up. I was like, yeah, you know, he did he did his thing. Right. He's got yeah. a very like 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 his record like impacting the world and like you know that's what I like to see. Mm. I like to see music impact the world and like wake people up and change stuff. You know, like. Like look at Meek, how he got out of jail, and how he's talking, how he's changing the world. Like that's what that's what yeah. that's what needs to come out of music. All the positive stuff. That's that's all the positive stuff coming out of music, mm. right? That's that's what you want to see. Right. That's what I want to see at least. Mm. So it seems like you're very aware of like everything going on in the game. Yep. I can say the thing. Like, do you think that's as one much as I see? Like, I don't, I don't watch the news and shit, but <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'll in... definitely watch an interview. Yeah, you know, like I'm I, I don't watch the news, but like if I'm trying to be like, oh, like what's up? Going YouTube, watch like Breakfast Club interview, watch this, watch yeah. that. You know, watch L.A. Wilson riding around Bentley when with Rich the Kid. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was oh, a scary experience, bro. Why? 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 I did a lot of texting. I didn't know what was going on. Like, I don't know. That's I think weird. he was having a bad day. But no. Uh, no, but do you think that's important? Shout out my dog, Rich, too. He came all, like, you know what I'm saying? Right? That's what I'm saying. I you met, guys are, like, I, in the trap met, with the Yeah, Migos. man. I was with him from day one. He's been finessing his way to the top. Yeah. And he, I'm very happy for him. You know, shout out Rich the Kid. Right. But do you draw inspiration from that? Like, how do you how do you stay so inspired? Like, to to just be to just cook me up twenty beats. Like, you gotta how find do you stay your, so driven. You just gotta find the balance and like, just like, not get lost in the sauce. Especially you know in L. A. Like like I used to always like every day I'd be cooking up like fifteen beats a day and shit. You know now now it's like now it's like I'll cook up like ten beats like chill for like three days, go back to the studio. Like it's all it's like find balance. I play a lot of video games. That's a good balance. You know. 
Mm. And then if we need to take a break, show some girls, go out, have fun. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Maybe go back to make go go back to Toronto, see my family, like get grounded again, then come back out here. Yeah. Cause at first I thought it was I thought it was like when I was out in LA, I was getting inspired. Cause I, I used to go to like I used to fly from Canada to come out here for like a month or two and then go back home. So I used to thought like coming out here was inspiring me to make music. But then I really found out before I moved out here, I found out going home and getting grounded. Mm. That's what was inspiring me to come out here and make music. Mm. So then that balance. When, so then when I found that out, like later in like the the progression, and then when I transitioned to moving out here, like when I when I actually found out being home and grounding myself, to, that was inspiring me to make music. And then I moved out here, so I was out here for good. I kind of had to like find the balance and like like find a way to inspire myself to make music more out here you know what i'm saying Cause it's tricky you know what i'm saying like everyone's got their own personal problems life problems going on and stuff you know yeah like no you you know what i'm saying everyone sees what's going on on the gram and like what people are tweeting and seeing them and this and that they don't see the negatives in lives like yeah we're all human too like i yeah. believe like you believe like you know what i'm saying People sometimes think these rappers are like robots and they think Gucci's a real clone and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Gucci man, you know, like, Gucci man. You know what I'm saying? But Gucci bleeds like I bleed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like we're all the same people. We're just like we're just like the fans are just like us. We're just like the fans. Like, you know. Do you yeah. dig for samples or do you Honestly, recently now I've been definitely getting way more creative with the music. Mm. Because like I, like it's not about like publishing and money to make and how many people are on a beat and doing a beat myself to make money it's like yo i'm trying to make the biggest records i can make and i'm trying to make records that are going to be remembered because mm. i feel like a lot of music nowadays is not going to be remembered right yeah so that's why that's why i felt like me and drake both re agreed and really felt really good about this nice foot record i feel like this is like a class like yeah. it was like an instant class like the first time you heard you're like oh shit yeah. like i mean straight to number one that's people the thing were too. like just yeah. like like that that record was crazy the, it, we were in new york too at the end of the press run, me and Smoke Perp, when it dropped in the club. Mm -hmm. So, like, mm -hmm. we went to One Oak the night it dropped, and, the, and, and Chase B was DJing. Wow. Uh, Travis is DJing. He's from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So, he was, like, he Playing played this shit 30. Times. Yeah, he played this shit 30 <laughs> times. I, I was, like, I we literally heard this shit all night. And he came up to me, he's like, man, this is such a big moment for the city and stuff. You know, I've never been to New Orleans, so I'm trying to go. Yeah. He's sad. Oh, you be treated like a king now. I'm trying, I'm trying to go <laughs> there and do some festivals. Essence Fest. <laughs> you know up on an auntie or something at that Catch a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> Not with an auntie though. <laughs> oh man, this is fun, man. Absolutely. So you just look yeah. out for you, Jeezy tour. Yeah, the Jeezy tour. And definitely. a hell of a lot of placements we can't really officially speak on. I'm but coming shit. I always got, I always got shit popping, you know. And even if I don't, I might leak some shit. Why is it uh, Novocaine <laughs> available on streaming services? Oppressor. Um, because I leaked that whole album. <laughs> <laughs> You're a and, leaker, man. And, and it's fucking yeah, leaker. it all got taken down. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure that's why. Okay. So, so you battle the labels at times. The labels don't always don't, love you. I don't even know. They love me now, though. <laughs> <laughs> they, love, they love me now. Are you staying like this indie kind of entity right now? Or are you like, I know the labels are throwing bags at you. Yeah, I don't know. There's some stuff behind the scenes going oh, on shit. that's going to be now soon. You uh -oh. guys might have to come back. <laughs> in the next couple of weeks maybe okay well you said that i think you said i mean obviously you're having a great year 2018 but i saw something where you said something about 2017 you had learned a lot of life lessons and you, yeah you, i've you definitely were... been learning a lot of lessons the last couple of years yeah but just like negative stuff and positive stuff you know yeah so but how are you adjusting to the success and, and fame and a certain level of fame like it seems like you're putting yourself out there even more and more like is that i'm never like, satisfied with that? yeah it's just i don't know that's something about me everyone around me knows that too uh, it's just something I don't know. I don't get caught up in this shit. Mm. I just gotta keep going. And now it's like you get to the top, and you get you get a number one, and you get all this stuff going on. You gotta figure, you gotta find like new new ways to motivate you and new stuff. Like I'm trying to do like murder sauce, a real deal. Like murder sauce, hot sauce, murder sauce bar. Like I'm trying to do like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm getting on my merch finally. Like I'm yeah. gonna, like finding like different ways to inspire myself and motivate myself to keep going. You know so. Keep going, That's murder hard. man. We respect it, man. Yeah, we got to bottle that murder sauce. Yeah, trust me, <laughs> yo, I love I love barbecue sauce too and shit. So my shit's gonna be the best. I'm gonna have the most fire sauce, hot sauce, all that. That's a great brand of murder sauce. Pass the murder sauce. <laughs> <laughs> you, see, like, you, see, you see the chef, you know what I'm saying? Ah, chef, chef murder, you know what I'm saying? So. I be I can only cook like omelets and shit, but you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't have some fire sauce. You know? <laughs> 
Definitely. Those five beats Word too, up. man. Murder. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Murder yeah. beats, yeah. baby. Rap yeah. Radar podcast. Yeah. Rap Radar, man. You know what I'm saying? Young Murder checking out. Keep God First 2 on the way. Woo.